The inauguration of Dr. H. Fred Walker begins with the academic procession. The Grand Marshal and Mace Bear, Dr. Brian Zimmerman. The Edinburgh University ROTC Color Guard in recognition of President Walker's service in the United States Navy, two members of the Color Guard also served in the Navy prior to entering Edinburgh's Army ROTC program. the Edinburgh University Global Education Student Flag Bearers. The Edinburgh University Faculty Marshals will lead the delegates into the auditorium distinguished delegates of colleges and universities. the Edinburgh University Faculty and Faculty Emeriti. the President's Executive Council of Edinburgh University. Edinburgh University alumni delegates Edinburgh University students representing the academic departments.
Edinburgh University students representing student organizations. Edinburgh University students representing varsity sports. The Deus Party. Ladies and, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for Dr. H. Fred Walker.
The investiture of Dr. H. Fred Walker as the 18th president of Edinburgh University is hereby convened. Please remain standing for the singing of the Star Spangled Banner led by music student Austin Blair. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallant. Spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. The invocation will be offered by the Reverend Brian Kelly, pastor of McLean Church of Edinburgh. Respectful of persons of all beliefs and faiths, allow me to offer this prayer. God, we are grateful for this day. We are grateful that Dr. Walker is part of our university and part of our community. And we are filled with great hope and excitement about the new chapter that begins today. We want only the best for Dr. Walker, for this university, and for this region. And so we ask that you would grant to Dr. Walker, wisdom to lead strategically, courage to lead boldly, humility to lead with compassion, and great vision to lead clearly. Help us support him in the work he does among us. Enable us to encourage him to support his plans and initiatives, to befriend him and welcome him with open arms. 
we ask that as we participate and engage in this ceremony today, that each of us would take a renewed commitment to the place and part we have been invited to occupy and play as we work for the betterment of this university, the betterment of this community, the betterment of this region, and indeed the betterment of our world. This is our prayer that we humbly make to you today. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to Edinburgh University. The investiture of Dr. H. Fred Walker as our 18th president is a highly significant occasion in the life of our university. Steeped in tradition, enriched in pageantry, in investiture as a twofold purpose in higher education. To present the new president in formal convocation to the public and to permit the university to reaffirm its commitment to its primary goal of advancing the excellence of the institution in all of its endeavors. For 160 years, Edinburgh University has been unremitting in its efforts to provide quality educational programs and services. We remain committed to the objective of preparing students for responsible, contributive, and personally fulfilling citizenship. The needs of society are evolving and at an ever-increasing pace over a global canvas. The resulting challenges that confront the university require the talents and energies of its faculty, staff, and students to a greater extent than ever before. The evolution of academic disciplines and the introduction of advanced technologies demand our serious attention. These concerns must be addressed in tandem with the development of a set of timeless skills, including communication, creativity, reasoning, analysis and synthesis in collaboration that support the realization of an educated and productive citizenry. We have every expectation that President Walker will take advantage of the many opportunities before him to lead Edinburgh University to the highest level of excellence and achievement. I would like to recognize members of the Edinburgh University Council of Trustees who are seated on the stage and ask that they stand as I read their names. Please hold your applause until all are standing. Dennis R. Frampton, Chair. Barbara C. Chafee, Vice Chair. Daniel E. Hyam, Secretary. Savannah F. Anderton, Student Trustee. Kathy L. Pape and Harold C. Shields. Thank you. Also seated on stage is President Walker's wife, Dr. Susan Newman. Dr. Newman, will you please stand and be recognized? Other individuals seated on the stage will be introduced as they fulfill their roles within the ceremony. At this time, it is my pleasure to present to you those individuals who will extend official greetings on this very special occasion. After I read each of their names, each greeter will move to the podium in the order listed in your program. When I call your name, would you please rise? Greetings on behalf of Edinburgh University students will be offered by Ms. Antoinette Jackson, President of the Student Government Association. Dr. Michael Bussell, President of the Edinburgh Chapter, the Association of Pennsylvania State College and University Faculty, will speak on behalf of the faculty. Edinburgh University staff will be represented by Ms. Carla Baer. As President of the Board of Directors, Mr. Scott Erlbacher will bring greetings from the Edinburgh University Alumni Association. Representing the Edinburgh community will be the Honorable Mary Ann Horn, Mayor of Edinburgh. Bringing greetings from the Edinburgh University Council of Trustees is Mr. Dennis Frampton, Chair. 
Harold Shields is representing Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education Board of Governors, of which he is also a member. And representing the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is the Honorable, the Honorable Michelle Brooks, Senator from the 50th District. You may all be seated. <laughs> Ms. Jackson. Hello, everyone. On behalf of the students of Edinburgh University, I would like to extend greetings to President Walker, faculty, staff, alumni, and the Edinburgh community for joining us this afternoon for this historic occasion. Dr. Walker, the student body of Edinburgh University would truly like to thank you for your passion towards student success. While there are many who say they have passion for the success of students, in the few months that you have been here at Edinburgh, you have honestly gone above and beyond expectations of enthusiasm for student success. Through your focus groups, you have gathered as much information as possible to an analyze the university and maintain strengths we have present that have a direct effect on student accomplishment. Through your listening hours, you've taken the time to listen to not just students, but those who generally care about the university and share your goals of improving Edinburgh. Lastly, I can honestly see that you are, cap are compassionate about the students and recognize the importance of supporting students in their goals. You were there during orientation weekend. You helped freshmen move in um, on the first day. You came and spoke face to face with organizations during Club Rush and it personally warms my heart that you took the time to come to SGA Congress meetings. So Dr. Walker, thank you very much for having passion for us, the students of Edinburgh University. You are truly affecting us and helping us grow as students and future leaders of the world. To our 18th president, <clears throat> Dr. H. Fred Walker, Warm greetings and best wishes from the faculty and coaches of the Edinburgh Abscuff Union. Enjoy this, your inauguration day, in celebration with us and all others sharing in this milestone. We all eagerly join with you to ensure the vitality of this distinctive university as we continue to provide high quality education at the lowest possible cost to our students and excellent professional service to the people of the Commonwealth. You have been chosen to lead in what is, unfortunately, an economic and political time where the future of public higher education is under attack and facing lingering disinvestment. Even so, you have embraced the challenge, and we are confident that the valuable traditions of this institution will remain the foundation of the transformation that will sustain Edinburgh University in the future. Preserving the hope and opportunity for the people of this region to better their lives and realize the American dream through higher education depends on this university as a public good that is accessible to the many of lesser means. To this end, we are committed to working with you as a diverse community in solidarity, harnessing the vigor and power it yields. In that way, I believe the next chapter of the story of Edinburgh University to be one with an inspiring and beneficial ending of which everyone will be proud. The nearly 400 faculty and coaches were pleased to have been able to meet with you in person during your listening tour with their departments earlier this academic year. Thank you. We look forward to continuing the dialogue with candor and civility. To end these remarks on behalf of my colleagues, I wish to extend a very warm welcome to you and your family at this time and to voice our sincere congratulations. <clears throat>
On behalf of the staff of Edinburgh University, we enthusiastically welcome Dr. H. Fred Walker as our 18th president. We also wish to welcome members of Dr. Walker's family and our honored guests. Someone once said, a smooth sea never made a skillful sailor. Dr. Walker, over the past eight or so months, your skillful and transparent leadership has inspired us and we look forward to watching your vision for this great institution unfold. This university is truly a community dedicated to the mission of helping our students transform the world. Your steadfast commitment to the ideals of this university and dedication to our students serves as a guide for all of us to strive toward each day. Dr. Walker, please accept warmest congratulations and continued support as we work together decisively and in a spirit of cooperation. On behalf of the staff at Edinburgh University, best wishes for your continued success as you take up the responsibilities and challenges of this position. Good afternoon, Dr. Walker, members of the Board of Governors, members of the Council of Trustees, and other distinguished guests. On this day of great celebration, I am proud and honored to be standing here representing the 65,000 plus alumni of this great university. As an amateur scholar of this institution's history, I can say with certainty that this is a great day in Edinburgh University history. Each principal and president of the school delivered critical leadership at critical times. A young Joseph Cooper became principal at just 29 years old and coincidentally for 29 years built the Edinburgh Academy into the Northwest State Normal School, known throughout many states for its academic rigor and advanced curriculum, among the first to integrate physical education, art, and music into the preparation of teachers. Several decades later, Thomas Miller transformed the institution into a modern state college with a sprawling campus to match. And then Chester McNerney and Foster Diebold built on that vision to further integrate liberal arts and elevate the local state college into a comprehensive university. At a time when there was great uncertainty about the future of public higher education, at Edinburgh we have great hope for the leadership of Dr. Walker to take Edinburgh University to the next chapter in its great history, stronger than ever and poised to continue to be the region's leader in providing the highest quality university education at the lowest possible cost. Edinburgh alumni are known for their pride in their educational experience, passion for their alma mater, and I can say with certainty that we are excited about the future of Edinburgh University with Dr. Walker as president. Thank you. President Walker. On behalf of the Borough of Edinburgh and its citizens, I bring greetings on the occasion of your inauguration as the 18th president of Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania. The Borough and the University have long history of cooperation for the benefit of Northwestern Pennsylvania, the citizens of the Borough, and the students of the University. I look forward to maintaining and enhancing that spirit of collaboration as we work together in support of the citizens and the economy of Northwestern Pennsylvania. On behalf of the Edinburgh University Council of Trustees, it is my distinct pleasure and honor to welcome our distinguished guest to the inauguration of our 18th president, Dr. H. Fred Walker. Dr. Walker has been providing exceptional leadership here at Edinburgh since his appointment on July 1st. We have already seen the wisdom of his selection. In a few short months, he has managed to build strong ties to the community and handled several major issues with skill and wisdom. Our expectations for President Walker are very high among those is to ensure success of the Edinburgh students, to lead the implementation of the programs that will prepare students for the 21st century jobs 
and to serve the needs of our employers in the region and the Commonwealth, and to lead the university community towards a decisive action that ensures a continued strength and vitality of this great institution. Dr. Walker, we are sure that your leadership and your loyalty to Edinburgh will stand this institution in good stead for many years to come. Thank you. I just received a note that says, Rumors of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. Signed, Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Edinburgh trustees, faculty, students, staff, and alumni, members of the Edinburgh community, honored guests, Chancellor Brogan, Chair Shapira, Dr. Walker, family, friends, ladies and gentlemen, fighting Scots all. As a member of the Board of Governors of Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education, I'm honored to bring greetings on behalf of the Board on this very important occasion. I'm pleased to say in this anniversary year that Edinburgh University holds a place of distinction among Commonwealth universities. For 160 years, it has been continually evolving and will continue to evolve to meet the educational needs of the region and of Pennsylvania. The board is very proud of Edinburgh's faculty, its staff, and more than 65,000 alumni who demonstrate the quality and relevance of an Edinburgh education in their careers and in their communities and throughout the world. With Dr. Walker at the helm, we are confident Edinburgh University will not only thrive in the 21st century, but will build upon its strong foundation with new, innovative programs and essential services for students and the citizens of the Commonwealth. In just eight months, we are already seeing the benefits of Dr. Walker's leadership. I was fortunate to be a member of the Board of Governors and the Council of Trustees, as well as an alumnus and a member of the search committee that brought Dr. Walker to Edinburgh. I am proud of the work he's doing. Under your leadership, Dr. Walker, I am certain that this fine university, our fine university, will expand its existing partnerships, refresh and renew its academic programs and fulfill its mission to serve its students and the economy of the Commonwealth for years to come. Dr. Walker, you have the board support as well as our deep appreciation for assuming this leadership position. So let me switch a second to my role as a member of the Council of Trustees. Let me ask you, all of you, to spread the word to your sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, grandsons and granddaughters, that when they are ready, Edinburgh University will be here when they get here. It may not be your parents or grandparents or uncle or aunts, Edinburgh University. It will be leaner, more focused, and better prepared to serve the students of the Commonwealth. So let me repeat, tell everyone you see that we will be here when you get here. Congratulations to you, Dr. Walker, and to your family, especially to the Edinburgh community. Dr. Walker, Walker, Chancellor Brogan, and other distinguished guests, it is such a pleasure to join you here today. Dr. Walker, on behalf of the Senate of Pennsylvania and the residents of the 50th Senatorial District, I would like to officially congratulate you and welcome you to Edinburgh University and our community. For more than a century and a half, the university has been enriching the Edinburgh community our region, and our state. Over these many years, the school's focus has adapted to, the, to fit the academic needs of the students. However, the mission of supporting and fostering excellence in those students has remained steadfast. With this in mind, I am so pleased to join President Walker for the next chapter in Edinburgh's rich story. Dr. Walker's theme of tradition and transformation remind us all to not only remember the past, but look to the future, to shape it 
and to reinvent it for generations to come. We are united at this time and place where the days of the past intersect with the brave new world. And to quote Abraham Lincoln, the best way to predict your future is to create it. In this theme, let us extend our hands and unite as one as we embark on this journey together of embracing the most venerable of traditions while forging the most vibrant of futures. Again, congratulations, Dr. Walker. I would like to thank each of our speakers for extending such warm and cordial greetings. I know that I speak for Dr. Walker in the entire Edinburgh University community when I express appreciation for your participation in the ceremony. Numerous citations and other formal greetings and good wishes have also been received from colleges, universities, and other institutions which could not be presented here today. We acknowledge these messages and also thank each of those organizations. The Honorable Thomas Wolfe, Governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, has also provided a video greeting which will be viewable at the reception following the ceremony. We also want to acknowledge the good wishes conveyed by the official delegates who are present here today, representing our colleague colleges and universities. The inst these institutions are listed in order of their founding in the program booklet. I will ask those representatives from the colleges and universities to stand as a group at this time so that we may recognize and thank them for their participation today. Thank you. I would like to also take a moment to acknowledge the many faculty, students, and staff who contributed to today's celebration Thanks are due to the Edinburgh University Pipes and Drums, the Highland Ambassadors, members of the Alpha Kappa Psi Professional Business Fraternity, and other student groups who volunteered their services, as well as members of the Inauguration Committee. We also thank Alison Bartley from Sign Language Interpreting Services for her assistance. Thank you to all those. At this time, it is my pleasure to present the Edinburgh University Singers under the direction of Mr. Craig L. McGaughy.
I now call upon Mr. Frank Brogan, Chancellor of Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education, Ms. Cynthia Shapira, Chairwoman of the Board of Governors of Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education, Mr. Dennis Frampton, Chair of the Council of Trustees of Edinburgh University, Dr. H. Fred Walker, and Dr. Susan Newman to please come forward. On behalf of the Council of Trustees for Edinburgh University, I am proud to present to you for investure, Dr. H. Fred Walker. Let the record show that Dr. Walker comes to this platform with the complete confidence and respect of the Council of Trustees, the faculty and the students, the staff and the alumni of Edinburgh University. The outstanding qualifications, wealth, of administrative skills and knowledge of higher education that Dr. Walker brings to this institution will serve it well. Chancellor Brogan, I present Dr. H. Fred Walker. Dr. Walker, before I begin a quick observation, I was uh, regaling some of my friends on the dais here today with the fact that my family and I journeyed this past weekend to New York City for the observation of the very important and world-class St. Patrick's Day Parade, which is held there annually. I, being as uh, Irish as Patty's pig myself, enjoyed it more than many, uh, including two million people who came together to view that parade, with 150,000 people actually marching in the parade, most of them playing the pipes. I said to my wife as we boarded the train to come home, if I don't hear a bagpipe for a while, it will be okay. <laughs> Forgetting very briefly that I would be here at Edinburgh and knew full well that I would be once again regaled with the sounds of the pipes. The pipes, however, were wonderful today. And the strains of those pipes not only gave us a chance to reflect on the long and illustrious history of Edinburgh University, also gave us the chance to quickly snapshot the present and the celebration here today, but also very importantly hearken the days ahead and the very bright future that lies in the future of Edinburgh University. And I am very humbly proud to be a very small part of this wonderful celebration today. Dr. Walker, you've been duly selected to serve as the 18th president of Edinburgh University. And it is indeed my privilege as Chancellor of Pennsylvania's state system of higher education to invest you in that office. For our students, it is your charge that the central mission of the university is one that sets it apart as a unique and special place. It must be one that provides an opportunity for students to acquire knowledge and gain skills, urges them to reach beyond what is ordinary in life and instills in them a sense of history. They should understand the basic values and ethics common to our society and have respect for the rights and dignity of all individuals, an appreciation of human creativity, an analytical and inquiring mind, and most important, a lifetime love of learning. On behalf of the state system, I charge you to use your demonstrated qualities of leadership sound judgment and personal integrity together with the applied strengths of this great university and to apply these strengths as an officer of the system as president of this university to advance the level of teaching research and public service that will most benefit the citizens of the commonwealth of pennsylvania i now recognize cynthia shapira Chairwoman of the Board of Governors of Pennsylvania's State System of Higher Education to administer the oath of office. Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Chancellor. It's such a pleasure to be here and such an honor to be here on this occasion with you, Dr. Walker. Dr. Walker. <laughs> Dr. Walker, by the authority of the Board of Governors and Trustees of the University, I ask you to raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, H. Fred Walker, I, H. Fred Walker, 
do solemnly pledge to commit faithfully, do solemnly pledge to commit faithfully my ideas and efforts to the goals of Edinburgh University. Say that again. <laughs> I knew I was going to go too long. <laughs> Uh, let's see, where were we? Do solemnly pledge to commit faithfully. Do solemnly pledge to commit faithfully. My ideas and efforts. My ideas and efforts. To the goals of Edinburgh University. To the goals of Edinburgh University. And to the entire state system of higher education. And to the entire state system of higher education. That they may better serve. That they may better serve. The individual and common educational endeavors. The individual, the and, individual and, common and common educational endeavors, common educational endeavors of, the citizens of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Of Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> I hereby present this to you with the medallion, the symbol of the office of the president of Edinburgh University. I hereby present you with the mace representative of the authority of the Office of President. By the way, Susan tells me you stumbled like that at your wedding. <laughs> and all you had to do was say, I do. That's not true. <laughs> Dr. Walker. By the authority vested in me as Chancellor of Pennsylvania's State System of Higher Education, I hereby declare you President of Edinburgh University with all of the honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to present President H. Fred Walker. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here today. Today's a special day in the life of Edinburgh University. I'll begin with some brief remarks and thanks for the people that are joining us and helping me put together this special event. Thank you to Chairperson Shapira, Governor Shields, Chancellor Brogan, Chairman Frampton, Senator Brooks, Mayor Horn, Mr. Erlbacher, Reverend Kelly, Dr. Zimmerman, Dr. Hannon, Dr. Bussell, Ms. Beer, Ms. Jackson, members of the Edinburgh University ROTC, members of the Edinburgh University Pipes and Drums, Professor Magahi, and the Edinburgh University Singers, and Mr. Blair. Thank you very much. Your participation in today's ceremony means a great deal to me and all of the members of our community. Thank you as well to all of the distinguished and honored guests who have joined us today. Council of Trustees members, college and university delegates, Edinburgh University students, faculty, and staff. Your participation is deeply appreciated. And thank you to my colleagues who planned this ceremony. They're acknowledged in the program. I would like to extend my sincere thanks for the opportunity 
that's been provided to me to serve as the 18th president of Edinburgh University. It's a tremendous privilege to devote myself fully to the responsible stewardship of this great university, its traditions, its resources, and its future. Thank you to my family and friends who have traveled to be part of today's special occasion with me. Special thanks to my wife, Susan, and my sons, Carl and George, for your tremendous support, as well as to Susan's daughters, Elizabeth and Mackenzie, her mother, Ann Howe, her sisters, Beth Green and Janet Buso. Thank you for joining us today for this special occasion. Thank you all. This is our moment in history. Here at this intersection of tradition and transformation, we step away from our daily work in classrooms and in offices across the university to observe a symbolic transfer of leadership. From this special vantage point, we can look back over some 160 years of history that brought us here today. And we can peer into that great future with great optimism and hope. A few minutes ago, I took the oath of office and received the mace and medallion, which are symbols of the presidential authority. I fully, and accept, I fully embrace and accept that authority, but also the responsibilities that come with this office. This is the work that I've prepared my whole life to do, to serve higher education. But I also share these responsibilities with each and every one of you. This is up to all of us together as members of an academic community, along with members of our broader community of Edinburgh, to transform the university that we have inherited. By rewriting the DNA of this institution, we will create a strong legacy for the future. Throughout my remarks, you will hear references to Edinburgh spirit and the Edinburgh experience. The Edinburgh spirit is a quality we've received from the past. It's a sign of strength. It's a sign of our heritage. The Edinburgh University experience is something that we can create as part of our work together for a bright future of the institution. Our Edinburgh spirit can best be described as resilience. It is strength in the face of adversity and ingenuity in the face of need. In 1857, when early Edinburgh residents recognized the need to increase the educational level of the community, they came together to create an academy and to train teachers. Through a century and a half of change and challenge, as a private academy, a normal school, a state teacher's college, a state college, and today's public, regional, comprehensive university, Edinburgh spirit has kept our traditions and our institutions strong. And it has allowed us to thrive as it continually transforms and evolves in what are day-to-day -day challenges for the community. Edinburgh University, Edinburgh spirit, has great resonance for me personally. It's a common bond between me as a newcomer and longtime members of the Edinburgh community. Those of you that know my past, my path through college, know that I was a non-traditional student. I was a Navy enlisted man in a working class background. I wanted to make contributions to society at a level that only higher education pro could provide. And at this point, that should resonate with us all as we strive to create and sustain opportunity for first generation and other college students. The Navy was my path to college, just as Edinburgh University creates a path for our students today. Like any journey worth taking, my path was not easy. After full days and 48 hour work weeks, on my job in the Navy working with Naval Electronics, 
I commuted 45 miles each way, each day, to the campus to attend classes at California State University, Fresno, often traveling in heavy, heavy Central Valley fog. While I was in the Navy, I made three major deployments and spent a total of 22 months at sea on an aircraft carrier. <laughs> that explains my twitch. Uh, the, the, these obstacles were huge. And at times, they seemed insurmountable. But it's with resolve and a commitment to education that I succeeded in overcoming these obstacles and I achieved my goal. Earning not only an undergraduate degree, but a master's of business administration while I was in the Navy over the course of nine years. That spirit of resolve and commitment is evident in the way that Edinburgh University has advanced its way through history. That resilient Edinburgh spirit has always carried this institution and this community forward. And I'm convinced that Edinburgh spirit will enable us to do this again. At our moment in history, the challenges are well-defined. Nationwide, institutions of higher education are grappling with demographic shifts, financial challenges, the changing expectations of students and employers. For the last eight and a half months, we've all been engaged in measuring ourselves against those challenges. We are confronting areas in which we have not done as well as we could. But we have also discovered that we are strong. Our working groups and our discussions have tapped into the strength and resilience of this great institution and community. Our processes have highlighted our ability to work together and our great capacity for finding the best path forward for our students, for our faculty, for our staff, our institution, and this region. Our path forward is taking shape. Over the last several months, I've said a great deal about the need to bring expenses in line with revenues, into refreshing the academic program array, and to enhancing our student success. I have not wavered in these comments. Already we have raised our admission standards and we're preparing for additional action to address these important priorities. Today I would like to raise our collective focus above the day-to-day -day work and talk about the Edinburgh University experience. This is a new conversation. Many of you heard, have heard me describe that experience as a three-dimensional cube consisting of six interlocking sides each side represents an aspect of the college experience. And together they create a complete experience inside and outside of the classroom that truly prepares students for successful and fulfilling lives after graduation. Let there be no doubt, we have very strong academic programs, we have very strong faculty, and we have very strong students. We have very strong staff, and we have a very strong community. Our academic program review will ensure that our programs are strong and relevant to today's students and the economy of Pennsylvania, without diminishing our commitment to producing well-rounded thinkers, citizens, artists, and philosophers. But academics alone are not what distinguish a university education. The complete experience, a rich academic culture that also includes experiential learning, varsity and intramural athletics, clubs and organizations, leadership development, and yes, history and tradition are what make an education exceptional. These things are what should be the hallmark of a university experience, and they should be a hallmark of the Edinburgh University experience. Nearly all of these pieces are present in our campus today. You can see the outlines of what is possible in the successful college careers of numerous individual Edinburgh students. 
Let me talk for just a minute about a couple of those examples. Biochemistry major Nicole Wagner earned a coveted spot last summer in the National Science Foundation research experience for undergraduates at the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities. Through this exceptional learning experience, Nicole spent 10 weeks conducting research that focused on a type of protein domain that has proven to be significant in cancer therapy. And she gained valuable experience during that to support her dream of working in research related to public health. I'll share another story. When I think of athletics, I think of students like Ryan Stratton. Ryan's one of our football players. Ryan's a young man with a large heart, a sophomore dual majoring in middle level math and special education, and he's very strong academically. He received the university's inaugural Dr. Joseph Leith Award last month in recognition of his dedication to championing individuals with physical and intellectual disabilities. Now I'm gonna stop for a second and relate a personal story. Those of you that were with us at that award ceremony witnessed an extraordinary event that helps really articulate our student, but what I am doing with this university as well. This young man got on stage to receive an award, came from a humble background, and found it overwhelming to be in front of a large group of people by himself up on that stage, struggling to make his comments. His voice started crackling. It was clear that he was faltering. This was an easy solution for me. I got out of my chair in the mid part of the audience. I walked up on that stage. I put my arm around his back and I stood there with him. And I could feel the strength coming from me into that young man. And slowly as the minutes went by, he started to gain his composure. And then he started to gain his sense of direction. And then he started to gain his self-confidence. And as that process unfolded in front of more than 100 people, I very quietly moved to the side of the stage. And as he gained strength, I moved down off the side of the stage. And as he gained more strength, I moved a little further away from the stage until I eventually took my seat. That says a lot about who I am and what my intent is for this university. My intent here is not to be the sole point of focus for the university. We have wonderful lives and jobs as educators. That is to get doors open for people and to help them learn and grow, to be there when they need to be supported and to help them as they need it. That's what I did that day. That was Ryan's moment, that was not my moment. We need to have Edinburgh University's moments, not Fred Walker's moments. And I am absolutely confident with everyone pulling together, we will have those times. I'll resume my comments. Recently, when I met with leaders of student clubs and organizations, I was impressed with the passion that they demonstrated for their co-curricular activities and more importantly for their university. Many of those students asked well-informed questions. And Rachel Walsh, one of the several who had great ideas for improving the university, was also there to, to boost the morale. She was also there to boost recruitment. Those are values very important for our university, that our university wants to put itself forward. Rachel is a computer animation major from North Eastern Pennsylvania, and she's a fellow archer. She came to Edinburgh for her academic program in the shooting sports club. Rachel would like prospective students to have the same opportunities that she's enjoyed, as, as we all do. Thoughts of student leadership call to mind individuals like Becky Leonard, president of our graduate student council, and a member of the budget and planning committee where she served on one of our working groups to help us understand our university better. Becky's pursuing a Master of Arts in Counseling with a concentration in college counseling. She's preparing herself for her current leadership roles with a well-chosen portfolio of activities during her undergraduate years, 
And in order to get where you want to go in life, it takes very careful planning. I'm proud that she's doing that. She, she's also been engaged with activities in very carefully selected strategies, such as participating in the Edinburgh University Honors Program and the Highland Ambassadors. As for history and traditions, history is all around us on this beautiful campus, but the traditions of this university are largely missing from the daily lives of the Edinburgh University students of today. Last fall, we took a small but significant step toward fulfilling this void. We did this by creating a more meaningful new student convocation for our class of 2020. Together with commencement, it helps to frame the four-year experience of the entire class, but it's the front end and the back end with four years in the middle. We need to fill in that middle. So you see the components are here, but we must fulfill, we must fill in the outlines. We must assemble the pieces of this holistic Edinburgh University experience. Academics, experiential learning, athletics, organizations, leadership, history, traditions. And we must boldly proclaim a future in which the exceptional educational experience of this great institution becomes the standard practice for all that come through here. The success of that work will lead to greater student success and enhance post-college success of our graduates. And that's why we're here. You graduates will be prepared not only with relevant skills and a well-rounded university education and an appreciation for the arts and sciences, but with leadership abilities, character, and other qualities honed by this Edinburgh University experience. This Edinburgh experience will help to ensure the success of our university as well. It will make Edinburgh stand out in a crowded and highly competitive marketplace we call higher education. It will make Edinburgh a leader among state universities and state university systems if we do it well. This and other goals we are setting for ourselves are bold, indeed, but they are achievable. They're achievable because our work toward this vision is in progress now. We have a strong university and a clear path forward, making it stronger. Our next steps are to define our measures of success and develop that plan to get there. That's critically important work for our community as a whole, on and off campus. Rewriting the DNA of this institution is our historic opportunity. We cannot stand by and wait for others to write the history of Edinburgh University in the 21st century for us. This, this is our moment in history. As we stand at this intersection of tradition and transformation, the path forward is ours to choose, and I believe the way is clear. Please join me, friends and colleagues, my fellow fighting Scots, in addressing the very surmountable challenges and the tremendous opportunities this moment in history presents to us. The Edinburgh spirit as we create a bright future, will grow. It will take further root. It will prosper. It will thrive, just as our community, our university, and our region. Thank you for being here today to mark this very important moment in the history of the university. Thank you.
now that you're comfortable, I ask that you stand at this time <laughs> for the singing of our alma mater, led by the university singers. The alma mater is printed in your program on the last page. Please follow along and remain standing for the benediction and recessional. Also, please join us for a reception and the Van Houten North Dining Hall immediately following the ceremony. Please pray with me. God, you have heard the vision that Dr. Walker has cast for this institution. We know that turning the vision in rea into reality will take hard work and effort. So God, for the sake of the lives this university touches, please grant him great success. Please bless and protect him and his wife Susan and their families. And as we take our leave of this place, may you guide us, guard us, and grant us success in making this region a better place.